Hello and welcome to a live Q&A detailing special here at the Rag Company YouTube channel where we are getting very festive on this Friday Eve. Today we are going to be doing some live detailing, a live rinseless wash and covering our current sale that is happening at theragcompany.com right now. So today joining me we have none other than Sydney Gwen here at PNS and we have Mr. Josh Brodel. <laughs> Hello. Are you guys ready to do some rinseless washing? Absolutely, always. Yeah. <laughs> oh, always. You're, you're always prepared yep. for a rinseless. <laughs> and behind us here we have the most menacing Nissan Ultima we have ever seen. We had the choice of washing a few different vehicles here. Yeah. We had a 2010 Camaro SS. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not bad. Nice car. Uh, then then mm -hmm. Sydney, yours is a. Well, it's a Jeep SRT that was dirty. It was it's dirty, and then off. miraculously, it was it and was somehow we clean. Pulled it in, and it was miraculously clean. Self-cleaning behavior of the coating, something, 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 something like, like that. that. And then we saw this Ultima in the parking lot. We said, "Oh come on, That's it doesn't one. get any cooler than that." And it's an SR, right? In Christmas red, ready for a quick clean. So today we're going to be going over uh, rinseless washing. Basically, Sydney and Josh are going to be taking the reins here, literally. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Come on, I got jokes here on this Q&A. It's great. So taking the reins, and they're going to be showing you guys kind of through the ropes here of an absolute rinseless wash, uh, utilizing a couple different IKs, utilizing what? Ultra Black Sponge, mm -hmm. a chenille mitt, maybe? Maybe, maybe. maybe. Ma okay, <laughs> nobody, nobody volunteered for the chenille mitt except for me, but uh, <laughs> so they're gonna be going through uh, and then obviously getting this cleaned up here. And there's gonna be a couple of different things that you guys might find on this vehicle that we might have to pull out some other products yeah. just to clean it up. So um, on top of that, we're gonna be, of course, answering your detailing questions. So speaking of which, we have a couple different sets here for today's Q&A. We have a couple different live guests, including Jamie, the cleaner, the clean maker cleaner. Can you believe it? Here, Jamie is live. Here. <laughs> and then we also have Dane, who is here to give us uh, a rundown as well as just some general housekeeping. So, Dane, take it away. All right. So, you guys are probably wondering, hey, you guys had a pretty good sale recently. And, uh, well, we can't help ourselves. we got to do it again. we got to do something special. So... What I have on the table here in front of me is just a, a, a sampling of different things that you can actually get 30% off of during the Rag Company's upcoming Better Than Coal sale. And speaking of coal, I'll get to that in a moment. But first, if you want to know what you're looking at, on the right here, I have the Double Twisters. That's 30% off. Whenever you wanted those, you could totally take them, knock it out of the park. Really great dry and tell. Then you got the Gauntlets here, also. 30% off, very awesome, love that. And moving along, we have the Cyclone Wash Mitt, which obviously everybody enjoys. You know you got the good stuff when you got this kind of salt and pepper look to it. Then we've got the Everests. Yes, all the Everests are also 30% off. Basically, I got the list here. It's like all this stuff is 30% off, so pretty killer deal. But then, with the Everests, we move on to the Dry Me River, the Waffle Wheeze. Classic Korean Waffle Wheeze. We love them. They're not going anywhere. They're just something we really enjoy, offering those at 30% off. Then moving down the line, everybody knows and loves the Eagle Edgeless, so you can get those at 30% off. Who doesn't want that? And finally, here at the end, we got the Premium Glass Towels. Now, these ones are excellent for doing the absolute cleanest passes on glass you've ever seen. A little, little bit of elbow grease, but they do an amazing job. Now. In addition to all these being marked down 30%, you also have cold cash. We thought this would be a fun little addition just for this sale. If you place an order, you're going to get one of these handy dandy fancy little cards in your order. And what does it do? Well, let me tell you. Right on the back here, $25 off any order, 100 bucks or more. All you got to do is use that code down there. Pretty sweet. Not a percent, just straight cash off. So, something new to try, thought we'd, uh, you know, give you a chance to sample that too. So, if you're placing an order, you get those. And finally, right here next to me, I've got the wonderful National Lampoon-esque looking family truckster uh, Christmas mobile here for our latest sticker. Love this sticker. It's also sparkly, if you couldn't tell. It's a pretty good looking little thing there. If I get the, yeah, there we go. Perfect. So, in addition, to the sticker that comes in the order. If you actually order our special mystery sticker pack, look for it on the site during the sale and during the sale only, you'll be able to get this sticker in addition to two bonus stickers. They're gonna be mystery stickers, so it could be anything 
from our past stickers. So you never know what you're going to get, but you'll definitely get this and two other mystery stickers. Really, that's all i got to share. So hopefully you guys check out the sale, check out these, and we'll talk more at the end of the show. All right, so we are ready for some serious rinseless action here. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is kind of going over your questions. So uh, as questions continue to pile in, Dane is going to be moderating those in the Q&A, and he's going to be going over and pulling those up on the screen. So we're going to be able to answer all of those. Uh, so whether it's questions for Sid, maybe it's questions for Josh, maybe it's questions for me, whatever it may be, uh, just know this is kind of an open format Q&A, just kind of hangout session. Uh, and if you guys have anything related to the sale question-wise, feel free to uh, chime in and ask those as well. So. Uh, guys, taking a look at the meanest Nissan Altima you guys have ever seen, Let's see. uh, evaluating kind of what we're working with here, yeah. what do you think? I would say it's, I'd say it's dirty. It's average dirty, yeah. Would you say it's too dirty for an absolute rinseless wash? Oh, no. Not at all. Not at all. Not even, not no. even close. No. I wash way dirtier cars. Than so, this is <laughs> Dane's rental vehicle. Okay. Poor, poor Dane. Okay. <laughs> poor Dane. So, many of, many of us know that... Uh, many of us know that his, his Jag was lost um, in, a, in a very slow parking lot incident <laughs> and he got uh, this Nissan Altima as a replacement loaner vehicle okay. um, and it, it's, yeah, it's not the, uh, not the worst vehicle, not the best vehicle. Uh, Jamie, what do you think of Nissan Altimas? What do I think about Nissan Ultimas? Well, I know most of them stay pretty dirty, so this one's going to enjoy getting a good, uh, absolute rinseless wash. I'm looking forward to it. Well, it, it, the thing is, is Nissan <laughs> Ultima drivers, right? Possibly some of the most aggressive drivers outside of NASCAR. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I think Dane has kind of taken a liking to this vehicle, but I would say it's it's a rental car, right? So it's going to have it's going to have some micro marring. It's got some scratches. It's got plenty of things just from going through a car wash. Uh, but what I've noticed is that this thing does have Water spots? Yeah. Would you say that I, I'm looking at them and I think that those are going to come off during the wash? I what do you think? I don't think they're going to. You don't think they're going to come off? <laughs> I don't know. No. I, I'm I mean, licking I it. I was actually going to say I'm we might need somebody it. to grab us a clay towel or okay. something. You know. That'd so we good. might be able to grab a clay towel. So is yeah. this? So g give me the rundown, Sid. So yeah. we don't sell it yet. We don't have it yet, mm -hmm. right? It, the plan, mm -hmm. crystal wash. Right. Right. Yeah. Is this a crystal wash? Um, show me where you licked. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm licking all over the place. You want me to start licking? No, it's, no. It's um, like, is this a crystal wash you know, contender? Is this something that you would well, throw some crystal wash on? I mean, on? I would definitely put crystal wash on it just to get the environmental fallout off. Kay. I don't know how good a job it's going to do on the water spots because it is a mild acid. So, Kay. you know, it's probably not going to remove baked in water spots. If these were like, if the car got hit by, you know, a sprinkler today and they mm -hmm. weren't fully baked in, it would probably take them off no problem. But these look like possibly they've been there since July. So, think so? they don't look that etched to I don't me. Know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll yeah. see. We'll see what the magic yeah, of absolute out. can do. Yeah. Uh, and we'll go from there. So, yeah. uh, Jamie, you've uh, you released a crystal wash mm -hmm. video earlier this week, mm -hmm. and oh, a yeah. lot of people check that out. On top of releasing your own video mm -hmm. with Clean Maker, congratulations. Yeah. That's a uh, Pretty Appreciate amazing. it. It's been a Congrats. it's been a crazy two weeks for sure. Yes, for it's sure. Been a crazy two weeks. So uh, <laughs> yeah. bet I guess I guess between Crystal Wash right and, and Clean Maker and all of that, um, obviously there's been a ton of interest and in people wanting to make some Clean Maker of their own. Uh, we actually have a little bit right. of Clean Maker and a little bit of Bead Maker over here in case the, the guys want to get crazy here. Uh -huh. uh, I'm digging it. In your experience with uh, hands-on Crystal Wash action and all of that down there in the true deep south, what are your thoughts on yep. that product? It's a fantastic product. I think it's, uh, especially for this rental car, it, I think it does need a little crystal wash action. It might not remove the water spots, but it's certainly a great way yeah. to start off the detail, start loosening everything up. Yeah. Okay. So my question is for, for you guys, crystal wash, right? I know we're not, I know we're not performing it, but I'm right. curious, right? Yeah. Crystal wash and absolute. Can that combo even happen? Oh, I do it every day. Yeah. You do it every day. So there every day. Go. So I pre-spray the car down and then let it crystallize. And then I just go about my wash like normal. I don't rinse in between. So I just go on and it, you know, because what happens is crystal wash like attacks the contamination okay. and it actually breaks mm. it away from the surface. So yeah. it makes it not even available to continue to stay stuck to the surface. So regardless, if you rinse it or you just go straight into your wash, 
that's all crystallized and it's just going to rinse away with your wash. It actually makes it easier. Makes it easier? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So okay. it's, a, it's a great product. I mean, it makes whatever you're working on, and I like to use it on the wheels, we know that, um, because mm -hmm. it breaks all that brake dust away. Yeah. And then it helps the brake buster just... Just do a better job. Yeah. Yeah. It, super, yeah. it supercharges certain parts yeah. of, the, exactly. of the wash process, yeah. exactly. which is pretty sweet. Cool. Yeah, um, awesome. Dane, do we have any quick questions before uh, the team starts jumping into mixing mix up product? Of course. I got a mountain of questions and comments here, but let me go I ahead and pop one that. in That's here. Crazy. We've got Jeffsy asking, we can Crystal Wash be used as a coating decon after a long, salty winter? Jamie, what do you think? Do you want me to read that? Uh, like I, like I say, it's certainly... Coating? Certainly a great way to start off pretty much any wash process. So after a long winter, I think Crystal Wash is uh, definitely a must uh, once it starts warming up and the salt starts uh, going away. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. here in Idaho, we obviously have, um, we use solid state salt and, you know, like a brine where there's all kinds of stuff going on around here. And definitely these will get like coated with salt. And I mean, it, it works great. It just like I said, breaks them away from the surface and makes it easy to rinse off, and it's great. I think it's w whether it's yeah, whether it's a, a they're actually using legit salt or they're yeah. using mag chloride or anything like right. that. I mean, yeah. ideally, during the winter, mm -hmm. at the end of winter, during beginning of spring, mm -hmm. multiple rinses, multiple treatments, mm -hmm. of especially going underneath the car and trying to get stuff broken yeah. free, uh, it's not a bad idea. Right, and here's the thing I think that is probably the coolest about Crystal Wash is you're never going to hurt anything with it, right? So no. use it. Like, that's the great part is try it. You know, yeah. I mm -hmm. can't like uh, sit here and say that 100% I guarantee it's going to take off every contaminant that you can ever find. But it's like Jamie said, it's a great way to start every single wash and it's going to make every single yep. wash that much easier. And you can't really damage anything with it. So why not mm -hmm. spray it on, right? I mean, whatever it's going to do, all it's going to do is make your job easier. So you know, that's not to say that you're not going to have to go back with a clay later or a clay towel or something like that, but it is going to loosen all of those contaminants away from the surface and just make washing them away easier. So, and it, it's not like using um, like a water spot remover on the car. Yeah. It's not being mm -hmm. too aggressive. You can use it every single wash. So that's, that's kind of the great thing about crystal wash. Yep. Yep. Precisely. And then I got Chris here asking, can you put absolute in your water supply to soften the water? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that never gets old. It never gets old. Um, there we go. So yeah, all right. Yeah, you can. You. I mean, you could absolutely do that. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 uh, it will soften the water. It, in in the sense of softening the water, it is going to prevent uh, the calcium, magnesium, things like that from sticking uh, to certain to to, cer to certain surfaces, right? Yeah. right. So uh, it depends on how much water you're trying to treat, right? If you're like, hey, I'm going to treat like, you know. 200 gallons that I might just be sitting on for a long period of time. I don't know about that, yeah. but I think uh, maybe if you're going through, you know, 30 gallons, 40 gallons a day, if you have a water supply in your truck, um, in your mobile rig or whatever it may be, uh, and you're using all of that within maybe a week or something like that, absolutely, it, it, go, go, yeah, go to town. Yeah. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. Yeah. Uh, Alex says, uh, happy Friday and uh, what a star studded <laughs> cast. Uh, have an amazing day. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Appreciate Alex. you being here. Shout out to the Canadian cohort. Yes. Doing this thing. Cool. Um, <laughs> I think people probably want to see some action happen because yeah. we okay. have yeah. essentially almost yep. two hours to uh, try to fit as much washing, mm -hmm. as much information as we can into here. Yeah. So, Sydney, I'm yeah. going to have you okay. show the team here yeah. how to mix up the absolute rinseless here in our bucket. So, yeah. we have a warm bucket, a warm Yeti bucket. Thank you. I appreciate that. Specifically, <laughs> warm Yeti bucket. I appreciate uh, that. Pure water in here. We awesome. have absolute. So, uh, basically, just talk about your mixing process. Talk mm -hmm. about what you use, how many capfuls, and okay. go from there. Yeah, so I'm not like, you know, I don't actually like measure it to the T. So what are we guessing? There's probably four gallons in here, right? I'm going to guess like probably a little, a little over four. A little, yeah, little over four. Okay, four so this cap is close to a half an ounce. So okay. the dilution is uh, 256 to one, which is going to be one capful per gallon. So I'm going to use a little bit more than four capfuls. And we forgot to do the, we got a rocket, right? Rocket. So okay. when absolutes a little bit chunky like that, you got to rock it back and forth, right? Yeah, not shake those it. Sweet polymers, right, ready? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so don't so don't shake it, right? Don't shake it. Rock it. Yeah, because it makes them all stick together. So when it's been sitting for a little while, see, then it oh, pours all that. nice. Yeah. It's like it's, rocking a baby. Yeah. Okay. Yes, makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. So there we go. And this one, we're just going to overfill the fourth one a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to take the cap and just gently 
swirl that around until all those polymers mix in. And of course, you don't need them all to go away, right? That's not going to hurt anything. But most of them will just mix in to be a nice, and man, it makes the water really soft. So at home, I normally wash with gloves, but I didn't bring my special gloves today. So I don't normally get to touch the water. It's very soft. Yeah, yeah it's very soft. All yeah. right. So I mean, it smells we, very tropical, smells right? very tropical, well, yes. Because, you know, here, so here in Idaho, right? We had, I'd probably say, we had an inversion for what? Probably close to yeah. about a week, yeah. right? Yeah. We had a couple, couple days where mm -hmm. the sun broke through <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, guys. It gets kind of sad yeah. around here when yes. it's, when it, you wake up in the morning, <laughs> yep. you go to work yep. and it's dark, dark and then you yep. get off work and it's dark and mm -hmm. I go, I need like a glimpse of like something, right? Yep. I need some sun. Yep. I need something tropical. Right. I need something like Bahama related. Yep. I don't know, right? <laughs> Mixing up some absolute in a bucket, right? And getting those yeah. tropical vibes yeah. in the garage. Yeah. It, it, it cure, it, it, there's something there yeah. that fixes that a little bit of that seasonal uh, yep. uh, you know, darkness. So yep. um, we have the ultra black sponge yep. ready to rock and roll. I like to use the ultra black sponge. So we're going to drop that in there Kay. and it's going to absorb the water. Um, and then we've got a chenille wash mitt, which you can definitely use, right? I'm a big uh, fan of Josh, the wash sponge. Josh, Josh, Josh is a big fan of the wash Josh sponge. Volunteer. So we're going to have to fight over that. Okay. But I like the ultra black sponge, but you can also use, you know, really with this, you can use whatever your favorite wash media is, right? So you can use a chenille mitt. Towels. You can also even just use towels if that's the way you like to do rinseless wash. So we'll stick that in there. Now, is this already filled up or no? So that has water in it. So you're going to have to mix okay, uh, some perfect. absolute into perfect. it. So right. um, it is roughly three quarters of the way full. Okay. So um, I left some room in there for some air for you. All right. Um, actually, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're, we're looking pretty full. We're okay. looking pretty flush in here. Okay. We're about at eight liters here so we're about okay. two, a little over two about two gallons right yep right yeah, yeah a little over two gallons okay so we'll do two Fish, cupfuls. Fisher, we got the Yeti Maybe bucket three. and a nice warm Yeti bucket. Do we have some target water in the IK foamer? That's what I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> so, so, know, so tar, you, see, you said target water? <laughs> yeah, so here's the truth about the target water. It's a hard to get in Boise. It target is hard to, water? You don't know about the target water? <laughs> is that just oh tap my water goodness. from Target? Oh my target goodness. Target water? Target water? Is this a, is this a no trend I, I miss? You are missing. So Target distilled water is the best water on the market. Stop it. It I is the never, chef's kiss of I distilled have water. I never heard no, of this. It's life changing. Speaking of water, guys, I did have a question regarding water. Okay. They wanted to know if we were what using you deionized water. We are not. We are nope. using, we're using yeah. straight out of the tap. Right. Straight okay. out of the tap, yeah. 200 and... 250, 260 uh, ppm. Yeah. It's a real which world is, for somebody. Yeah. Say, real world, which is great, kinda, right? Because you know, starting yeah. out, PM yeah. running. Yeah. So back to the target water. So they're distilled yeah. water, right? Yeah. When you're putting it like in your steamer <laughs> or mixing chemicals, okay. it honestly is the best. They can, it, but they, everybody no, has still Albertsons has not, distilled no, water. It's not the same. Why do you think Jamie's so successful? <laughs> is. It, <laughs> <laughs> How? Where's the closest target to Jamie? Jamie, no. where's the closest target to you? <laughs> About an hour. About an hour. Up. Yeah, but no joke. <laughs> Go to Target here in Boise. I tell Jamie this all the time. We are out of it all the time. Dan there Piper is knows. something in that water <laughs> because it sells out all the time. It I, is like it's impossible. Three to get minutes in. away from me. Yeah. So I need and to if be you want that good. Yes. Yes. If you want that good IG foam? How much is it? Water. Like two bucks a gallon. But here's the deal. When you do Brake Buster and the IK sprayer, totally different. Target well, I think you guys are messing with me no. right now. No, go watch the <laughs> videos. <laughs> Brake Buster in Target it. Water is Literally like. I've never heard of it. I feel like it's this. It. Okay. This live is already getting pretty crazy, <laughs> right? But I mean, now I've, I feel like I'm actually losing my mind. So, all right. So we've How mixed this stuff this? here. So we are going Fixes to. Fixes uh, here. Fisher doesn't just, watch the videos. Confirmed. Right. Swirl this in. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pass this over. Josh, if you want to start. Oh, I get to be the pump guy. You get, you get to be the pump, pump guy yeah. because I'm, I'm going to have Sydney. Okay. Actually, I'm probably going to mix this. So this is the multi. 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 Oh, yeah. 1999 Super Chat from Luke Berge. Hold on. Oh, come on. Hey. Okay. We applaud our super yes. They get special recognition super because there's train. actually no reason they did it's that real. or had to do that, but they did, and that's awesome. So thank you, Luke. Very thank you, Luke. We appreciate, and we no, appreciate that. And no, you can't foam absolute, but you already knew that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to mix this, and then I'm going to step away because I'm going to let these guys actually start getting some work done because we're going to start actually answering some questions because I will talk throughout this whole thing. Yeah. Um, from there, though, we are going to be taking a break. Uh, 
a couple different periodic moments, and we're going to be talking about some new products from TRC, things that we launched over here within the last month or so. Um, and then we are going to be highlighting some other things from the sales periodically, but um, I'm going to let them get to work, but I'm going to mix this up really quick. So this is the Multi Pro 2 360. So this is one of the recent releases from IK. And this is going to have your weighted tube in the bottom. So okay. the weighted tube is going to allow us for a 360 degree spray angle, which is Ooh, absolutely amazing nice. for a rinseless wash like this. I haven't gotten to use one of these yet. So for this, I'm going to dunk the Multi Pro 2 360 into this bucket because why am I doing this? Because it's already mixed. It's already mixed. Yeah. It's ready to go. And it's clean. Yeah. It's, it's clean. clean. Yep. It's clean and it's ready to use. So And we don't need all four gallons to wash the cars. So we're nope. good. And I'm going to just get it to where I'm leaving a little bit of a little bit of room in there. A little bit of air. Drop my weight down in there. This is actually the hardest part about the whole thing. Just lining <laughs> that up. Kick Suzanne. Way to hit the target. Good job. And then once that's on, we are ready to rock and roll. So we can go ahead and pump this up. And same thing with a normal Multi Pro 2. It's going to uh, hit the release valve once Pop it's reached up, max okay. pressure. Mm -hmm. And um, what's great though is that now, mm -hmm. oh, locks on. Cool. Wow. Spray upside down. Nice. Which is pretty cool. So All right. you guys got it from here. Josh, Cindy. Right. I think so. Cool. All right, Josh, I'll take the top, the easy part, and you hit the lower with that. Can do. <laughs> the bottom's a lot dirtier. So in this, um, we've got the same 256 to 1. Yep. I think the one that Josh is using is a little bit, I mixed it a little bit heavier, Ooh. just so that it kind of starts that, you know, good encapsulation ahead of time. Wow, this is nice. Very cool. All right, Josh, what do you want? The the noodle or well, the sponge? Well, I, I, I know you're a sponge, so <laughs> yeah, but I, I, do get to use I the will every bite the day. bullet and use the chenille, even though it's not my <laughs> preference either. <laughs> Too funny. Yep, shout out to noodle people. Shout yep. out to Bob. <laughs> Bob loves a Bob traditional. Loves yeah, right? Yep. Go figure. What There's do you use, Jamie? Do you use it, the if sponge or the you, then Just be happy with it. Oh, I'm going sponge all day. Yeah. I mean, I love the sponge because it's fast. Yeah. You get through there. You're not wasting any time. I just feel like the I just feel like the contaminants come out easier from the sponge. Yes. And we won't go into it, but everybody knows I'm afraid of mitts. So. <laughs> afraid of mitts? That sounds like something we do have to go into. <laughs> we don't need to go into it. I'm just afraid of mitts. <clears throat> all right. Wow, this is a little crusty. So, in all honesty, do we have a clay towel? Because I almost feel like this would benefit from like a, a wash clay seal, right? Yeah. Since we're washing. Ooh. Yes. Because I can feel the crusties. From this <laughs> angle alone, you can clearly tell that that thing was dirty. Like the other cars, yeah. they, they got cleaned yep. before they were supposed to, before the video. But this Altima, right. may have looked okay in regular light, but boy, oh, you get it in here. <laughs> They're not coming off. Awesome. Thank you, Gabe. All right, I'm going to get my uh, clay mitt soaking. So I'm going to wash this whole side, and then I'm going to use the clay towel if I can get this out of here. There we go. All right, let me get that soaking. Do we have any questions yet? Are we supposed to read, be reading our own questions? Yeah, no, I, I'll go ahead and throw questions out. I'll give you guys cool. a heads up when I have them to read, but uh, oh, I'm going okay. back through the earlier stuff because I didn't have my... Gotcha. trusty iPad with me when I was uh, out there. So I got to <laughs> look back through 10 pages of stuff. Yes. 13 pages now. Yep. Ooh, find the good stuff. But uh, I do have to throw the prerequisite uh, Dan Pfeiffer in there because he is kind of the uh, alarm bell to let people know that Q&A is going on. It says, good afternoon and word up from a sunny 50 degree Minnesota, USA. Happy nice. Friday Eve TRC gang. Time to get the pressure washer back out again. Nice. I can't and believe I've it's got 50 Kim degrees Sank. in Greetings Minnesota. to everyone. Nice to see Kim there. Oh, I'm getting a lot of water. And we'll go back through in order to make sure I'm getting all the folks. We've got Harry Housewife, Darren, popping in and saying, Hey, beautiful people. Hope you're all well on this fine Thursday evening. 
And you did see yeah, Alex's good. comment earlier, but I'm doing these in order, so I'll throw it out again. He's just saying, what a star-studded cast. So Sydney, <laughs> Brodel, Jamie, you guys are all stars. Always nice when Alex can join us. <laughs> all right. And then we've, we've got, got Lakes Country detailer, not to be confused with Lake Country, although from the same region. Hello from Lakes <laughs> Country in Minnesota, Makes 55 sense. degrees and loving it. So, yeah, you guys are a little warmer than uh, than we are. <clears throat> then we got the one who shall remain nameless. Everybody, Levi and Anthony always give this guy a different name every time we uh, go through the q and I think the last time they called him was like Tim or something. Anyway, <laughs> good afternoon and happy Friday, Junior, from the sunny south coast of Massachusetts, home of Anthony's Portuguese cousins. All right. <laughs> we got Eric here saying hello. How's it going, everyone? I'm sure I'll get to some... Oh, here's the first question I've run into, in because I'm going in order. Uh, question about Crystal Wash. So we'll direct yeah. this to Sydney. Okay. David Cervantes wants to know, does it work good on heavy iron contamination? So, no. I mean, it, it does. Like, it's going to help a little bit. But that's okay. kind of the difference is Crystal Wash is really formulated for all other contaminants, whereas Iron Buster is literally just for iron. So if you have true rail dust you know there's rail dust or you know there's iron i would go to an iron remover but if you just are looking to remove general contaminants then crystal wash is going to be a lot more friendly it's going to be a lot less smelly um and not as much to clean up so generally speaking like 9.5 cars out of 10 i'm using crystal wash and that 0.5 i'm going to use an iron remover so um yep. if you know you have iron remover still use or, I mean, if you know you have iron presence, still use an iron remover. Right. Like, there's a chance that it could work on it, but it's that's not really what it's formulated for. So, they are actually two totally different products. That's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Then I got Joey Blinsky here. Oh, Jamie, Joey. Can you see his comment there? You see what he's saying? Yes. Should be a fun one. <laughs> Should be a fun one. Always. All right. Always, yeah, Joey. I need to give Joey. Hello, uh, everyone. Happy I need holidays. to give Joey a shout out. He's going to be my co-host on Beadmaker and Coffee on Monday. Oh yeah, got to yep. thank Joey for that. Which, by the way, Sydney, go ahead and plug uh, plug your show there for a minute, just so folks watching actually know too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, PNS, we have a our Q and A every other Monday, um, live on Facebook and YouTube. So I have a guest co-host with me every other week, and so this week Joey will be my co-host. Uh, mainly because not only is he great, but he was also present at the event where Jamie got to make the clean maker. And so I wanted to have him on so that he can share kind of, you know, what we did that day and what his experience was being at PNS because it's always so fun. Um, and so just kind of keeping the clean maker train going, I wanted to have Joey on. So it should be really fun on Monday. So everybody should tune in, you know, hear all about it if you haven't already. And, uh, you know, definitely we can answer questions. And Joey uses a lot of PNS products too. So he'll definitely be a wealth of knowledge for um, answering those questions. Nice. Yep. Oh, and right. if you're not aboard the clean maker train yet, <laughs> definitely go check out my channel and uh, check out all the videos. Do that. Jamie's a good dude. He's fun to watch. He always has something interesting to say. And uh, yeah, no, I definitely uh, thumbs up that. Which, by the way, this is my not so subtle segue into saying you guys watching right now should be thumbs upping this video if you haven't done it already. <laughs> We'd really appreciate that. And uh, while you're at it, make sure you subscribe to the Rag Company channel as well as the Rag Company podcast YouTube channel because right, today's Q and A is a bit of a, a bit of a test, just a little fun that's fluke. What I was just going to ask you. Putting well, it here I on think the we need to click main Rag Company channel as a way to show the sale as <laughs> well as do some detailing. Wow, the contamination. The yeah, there's a lot of stuff on. But there. we'll be back there's on the, the main on. podcast right. channel so, for uh, Q and A next week. So don't worry, we're yes. gonna bounce in between so the two. So I typically like doing this process with uh, paint gloss at this step. Oh, okay. I use bead maker because then the car's protected and we're done. Okay. So it's like a one and done. Perfect. So, um, and since it's here, can we do it with dream maker? Um, would you recommend not you doing could, it? but it's not really going to provide any benefit. Okay. So it probably has enough slickness to use as, you know, the lube, but the reason I like to do this is because we're taking off the contaminants, we're smoothing it out and leaving behind a sealant at the same time. Sure. So I like to use bead maker. You can certainly use paint gloss, especially if you were going to be correcting and coating yes. this car. Then you could use paint gloss as your, um, you know, clay lube. But 
I just like this because it's one and done, and then you get all the benefits of the bead maker, you know, the pop of color, all that, yeah. and then you can follow back up with Dream Maker or Clean Maker, sure. whichever you prefer. So I like to use Bead Maker just because it does such a great job, and then we are leaving behind some protection Perfect. for this rental car. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to just put on several, oh good, there. yeah, there's more bottles over there. I kind of put it on a little bit heavy just to make sure that I've got, you know, plenty to use there. And then I just go in, you know, straight motions. I don't use circles or anything like that. And you can almost hear when that contamination goes away. Right. Like you can hear it through the towel. And so then you know when you're done. Now I've got a question <laughs> for you guys, you guys regarding <laughs> temperature oh, yeah. when rinseless washing. Yeah. I've got John, John Ray Enriquez saying... What is minimum temperature outside or in the garage uh, can you use for rinseless wash? So basically, what's a safe floor level temperature I can use where I'm not going to screw up a rinseless wash? You know, I think that it's probably going to depend on the temperature of the panel. So I always mm -hmm. like to answer things more in the temperature of the panel versus the actual air. No, that's um, a great point. Because if the metal is frozen, no matter what... Mm -hmm. water touches it, it's going to freeze on the surface. So I think that, you know, if, if it's cold outside, but the cars maybe been in a garage, you're going to be fine. Totally fine. Because we're going off the temperature of the metal. Um, if it's really cold, say the car's been outside and it's 20, 30 degrees, I think obviously using warm water is going to help and working one panel at a time. So we're obviously in here in a very climate controlled, you know, it's probably like a lovely 71 degrees in here. Yeah. And so we can literally wash this whole car and leave the water on it, right? It's not drying on us. It's not, you know, we didn't need to do one panel at a time. Right. So, but if you're working either major hot, major cold, stick to one panel at a time, get it done, dry it, and you're going to be fine. But it's really, it's going to matter more on the temperature of the panel. So if the car has been warm overnight and you're just working outside, life's going to be a lot easier. Yep, definitely. So, yeah. All right. All right. Did you yep. need some of this, or did yep. you find I think a steel one? one? I don't know where our other one okay. went. Okay, here. I'll just spray this. Or hose whole it down. Yep, and we'll start working. I'll spray this whole thing down. <clears throat> this is going to make a big difference because the crusties are very loud, <laughs> and they get very smooth. All right. There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> And this is actually the process that I use when I do full details and coating maintenance. I use the same process just to decontaminate and reseal in one easy step. It's great. All right. And since we were talking about temperature, I will say too that Regardless of the temperature, rinseless washing is going to be leaps and bounds better than trying to use a hose, right? Because if it's really cold, then you're going to have a whole bunch of water on the ground, which is just going to turn everything into an ice skating rink, and that's not going to be good. Yeah. I don't have this cold problem, so I don't have too much to say to the winter <laughs> questions. <laughs> okay. Again, everybody. I was going to ask Jamie. That must be nice. So, yeah. You can just dodge that bullet all together. It's uh, not so bad. <laughs> At least here here in Idaho, we do have the benefit of not facing with too much salt. Oof. I mean, they don't really mm -hmm. salt the roads. They use <laughs> other chemicals instead. But uh, I know as soon as you go to, like, obviously the Rust Belt or, you know, in the Northeast, stuff like that, yeah, it gets real nasty real fast. Car, car cancer is much more prevalent over there than it is mm -hmm. here in the high desert of Idaho. Mm. See, now this is kind of cool, too, because up here on the hood, probably because the engine was running, right, this water is going to dry out a lot faster. But we were talking about water spots earlier, and kind of the cool thing is that these now are just polymer water spots, so they're not true water spots from, you know, what we were doing as far as washing. And so once they're reactivated with the Absolute or the bead maker in this case, you know, they're going to come right off. So they're just polymer <coughs> water spots. So if you do accidentally let absolute dry on the surface, you're not leaving behind more water spots. Now this car was obviously completely coated in water spots before we started, but we're not leaving any new ones. Exactly. Umberto 
Sydney Gwynn should be renamed as Sydney Jones. She keeps finding different treasures at PNS. <laughs> yeah, she goes you deep know, in the basement. Yeah. George Rick Smith responds, Sydney yep. Anna Jones. <laughs> oh, that's Sydney Anna Jones. That's hilarious. I like that. Yeah, so we found, uh, when Jamie was there, we found the attic. We didn't know there was an attic. So there's an attic yep. and a basement. And uh, I, you know what, Jamie, you'll enjoy this. So I just got my delivery from the attic yesterday. Mm -hmm. So my box of the poster and the, what else did I get? Like an apron, some old uh, <laughs> fleece sweatshirts. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah, all kind of goodies. So, yeah, literally from the attic, if you know what I mean. Um, so that was fun. So I just got that in, um, yeah, there's all kinds of good stuff at PNS. I was just there yesterday. You know, I had to go uh, go-kart racing. Yeah, how mm. was So that? you missed that. Oh. <laughs> it's not for me. That's what I learned. I learned that I'm not aggressive. very fast. Well, I'm just not very fast. Like, I thought that I felt like I was going really fast. And I think mm -hmm. I did, I think, like, my fastest laps were, like, 20, let's see. I think it was 24.5 seconds or something like that. But Tony Mizell and Rennie had the fastest times, and they were, like, in the low 21s. So I was not very fast, I don't think. Huh. But, um, yeah, I got hit a few times. I got passed a lot. But I never crashed because of myself, so there was that. But, yeah, it was, it was a good time. We took the whole team yesterday, the whole warehouse team, and then all of Team PNS uh, K1 racing. It was quite quite amusing all right so That's we have fun. the whole car um now we you know added in the clay and seal so that isn't that crazy josh how all of a sudden you can't hear this stuff yeah like you can hear it I and you then guys could hear it on camera i know right cool. it's wild because you can hear it and then it just goes away and then you know you're done so then this because we have the bead maker on the surface now it's also going to make it insanely easy to dry and keep in mind, if you can see the water spots, they were here before we were. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, guys, right. it's a rental car, so just understand <laughs> everything that comes with it being yes. a rental car. Yes, but I also love this because now with the bead maker on the surface and the contamination removed, it actually makes drying the car way, way faster. So much easier. Yeah, and just so much faster, too, because on a surface level, when there's contaminants on the surface, the drying towel just kind of goes over them and it does it does make it take longer to dry so even just having those contaminants off so that you have a nice flat surface it really does that aids in the drying process as well and then it's just going to be all nice and shiny and protected and feel buttery smooth wow this <laughs> the paint is hammered well, let's see. I've got some different <laughs> comments here. I've got more crystal wash questions. Let me pop up Todd Nolan here. What we got? Todd saying, actually, Jamie, you go ahead and read this one. Todd Nolan, crystal wash before rinseless. So spray crystallic crystal, pre-rinse with IK and standard rinseless wash. Is it that easy? I would say yes, it is. Okay, crystal wash before. Spray crystal, let, let it dry. Let crystal, pre-rinse, yeah. rinseless wash. Yeah. And honestly, when down, I'm huh? doing crystal wash, I don't even do the pre-rinse like we did here today um, because that is my pre-rinse. So in this case, oh, okay. like if this car was in my shop, I would just spray the whole thing down with crystal wash, wait for it to dry, and then go straight into my wash. I don't even do the pre-rinse because um, you really don't have to. So, you know, you're going to be fine with that. It's breaking it away from the surface, and then the polymers of Absolute are going to encapsulate it. Like you're going to be totally fine. So if you feel like you want a pre-rinse, Absolutely, you can. No harm in that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I just always look at things like if you're not, if it's not a benefit in the step, you know, sometimes I won't do it, but um, you're fine either way. So if you feel better about pre rinsing, if you feel better about, you know, using a pressure washer to rinse it off, feel free. But really, all you need to do is just let the crystal wash dry and then start your wash. Cool. All right. Then I've got That's a easy. question here from Kev Cav. Kev Not Kev Kev, but Kev Kev. Hi, guys. <laughs> Does Absolute have wax in its formula? As the gloss is amazing. Nope. It doesn't. So there's no wax in it at all. Um, okay. Absolute, it just has polymers, and a side effect of those polymers is <clears throat> like a visual gloss. So there's nothing yep. on the surface. And this is always like, right, it's always like the age-old argument like does it leave something behind on the surface well of course i think that any yep. soap or anything leaves something behind on the surface 
but it's nothing that is necessarily enhancing the gloss. It's not, you know, you could still coat it. Like it's not leaving behind any protection per se, but there is, you can, you know, there's obviously polymers that have now touched the surface that are going to give the feedback of a glossy look. So um, during the process of um, creating Absolute, you know, that wasn't even something that was like on our checklist was for it to be glossy. And I remember going through the testing phase and I washed my car and it was actually a different car than this one, but I remember washing my car and I've obviously washed my car so many times. And I walked away and turned around and looked at it and I was like, well, that looks really different. You know, hmm. it's very shiny, very glossy, right. but it's not leaving anything behind on the surface and there's no gloss enhancers included. It just, the polymers that are in absolute give off a byproduct of making it very shiny. So yay, that's <laughs> great. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we love it. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, um, but no wax at all. Follow up here from uh, EC Details. Just want to know the shelf life of Absolute. If Jamie or you could speak to that, any idea? I've never kept it around long enough to know. So I would think it's quite a bit. Um, you know, the only thing with Absolute is you are going to get some color um, degrading in it, but it doesn't harm the, uh, the effects of it at all. You know, like it's it will another over one of those time. cases. Give yeah, it a shake and you're good. Yeah, and it, well, a rock, right? Not a shake. Yeah, give a, rock. It a rock. Sorry, a rock. proper, proper <laughs> See, this is where, <laughs> this is where EC Details messes up, because he doesn't believe in the right. shaking versus rocking, so he yeah. he shakes uh -huh. the crap out of it every time he uses it. Yeah. I think eventually those polymers, you know, do chunk up to a point where that bottle yeah. may go bad. Yeah, yeah. That's a fair point. So, and yeah, also, like, storage, too, right? Um, You know, I know that I had a bottle that was kind of stored near my garage door, like, in my overflow cabinet, and you know, the sun would beat down if I would leave my garage door open, the sun would beat down on that cabinet. Oh, yeah. And That'll definitely it. it got a lot more chunky. Um, you know, I can still run it through my uh, Chemtrol, but I mean, I think the shelf life is probably quite a while, but I use mine so fast that I'm not sure. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> then I got Anna here asking, Jamie the Cleaner, what's the absolute clay loop dilution? So I... I can run absolute, you know, 256 to 1 for everything, but that's because I'm so comfortable with it. So it when you're fun. starting out, uh, I say, you know, 64 to 1 in the 32 ounce sprayer is a great way. Just one cap full in the 32 ounce sprayer, mm -hmm. and uh, that'll handle your drying aid, clay lube, door jams, that kind of deal. Okay. But once you get comfortable enough with it, you can run everything. I mean, 256 to 1. Oh, of course. And Kim's right. In rental companies opinion. love it when you return the rental with uh, a little bit of a detail on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water uh, spots oh, did yeah. not come off, oh. but I will say it's very, very soft and smooth. Very soft. Yeah. Feels now this one, nice. I've got Hans here. It's a little more of a TRC question, but he's wondering how he can get that sticker pack and a few other items off the website. He can't order online. I understand because he's based in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's a little ways off. Basically, all I can tell you, Hans, is... Uh, Talk to John, maybe. Otherwise, you, you'll have to figure something out with Patrick. That's what I would say. Over at our uh, distributor over mm -hmm. in TRC Europe. Okay, <laughs> so next up on the line, if you guys are continuing on your way, I'll leave you to it. I'll keep fishing for more questions. Cool. Sweet. Keep yeah, we could, we could, uh, we could right. attempt to wash these wheels if we felt so inclined. Do we have... Um, I think we could do them with just rags if we had some like dirty old rags, right? Yeah. Oh, you know what? If only we had rags. If we only had rags that were meant to throw away after. Do we have any of those? I think we could manage some of those. Maybe some we could rip. Yeah. So while we look for the new products, let's jump over to Anthony at in the white room. Hello and welcome to a new product segment here uh, during this Q&A special where we're just gonna hopefully just kind of briefly educate you here on a couple of the new stuff that you may have missed over the last month or so here at TRC. Uh, essentially, we got back from SEMA. We blacked out. It got crazy. The whole <laughs> month of November was just a massive blur, right? Uh, and then December happened and we go, holy smokes, it's, uh, it's Christmas season, right? And people are gonna be looking for awesome quality uh, gifts for stocking stuffers, Christmas, wh whatever it may be, right? Or maybe you're like me or you know somebody like me that has a birthday in December and people go, this is your birthday and Christmas present. 
And that's always fun, right? And you hope it's a big thing, but typically it's something small and because they forgot one thing or the other and you just kind of settle like that for your entire life. And 34 years later, here we are. So anyway, um, getting into this, so we have a few new products that we're going to highlight. Obviously, the team over there has been using the IK Multi Pro 12 uh, to rinse the entire uh, Nissan Ultima down. That's going to be a new release from IK Sprayers. It's absolutely fantastic. Again, we were looking for kind of the ultimate rinseless wash sprayer from IK for many, many years. And this answered that because they had released the tint sprayer back in 2022, which was a fantastic sprayer. Uh, but the price point, right? Because you're almost at about 400 bucks there for that tint sprayer, which wasn't really realistic for rinseless wash people. Now with the IK Multi Pro 12 coming in at, you know, under 200 bucks, 150 bucks or so, that's going to get you into a premium sprayer that's going to have enough pressure to actually rinse something. And now it's going to have uh, the air chuck valve on there. So where you can now use your air chuck to uh, fill that up and pressurize that without having to pump anymore if you don't want to. So the IK Multi Pro 12, again, they use that in the demo along with the IK Multi Pro 2 360, which is, yeah, another massive improvement there with now being able to turn thing upside down 360 degrees. So I'm going to get to the other new IK products here in just a minute, uh, but we are going to highlight what is new from us here at TRC. <laughs> so I posted a reel the other day. You may have seen this beautiful stack of blue pancakes here. Delicious. Just ready for a, a nice sugar-free syrup just to really send it over the top. Am I right, Dane? That's right. <laughs> That's I'm, right, Anthony. Let's tell them some more. I'm on, I'm on a weird one today, and I'm just kind of rolling with it. I'm having fun. So um, these are going to be the new uh, round, essentially round detailing applicators. So people that have been fans of TRC for many, many years may remember our very first round wax app. This was, uh, how do I say this? It was a good microfiber accessory for applying waxes, for maybe applying particular dressings to interiors and things like that. Uh, but it didn't really fit well in the hand. It was kind of loose and really there was imp improvements to be made, right? And so all these years later, we said, how can we revisit that, make it a more premium version, and then come out the gate with something that is going to be ready for waxes, ready for coatings, uh, and ready for anything else that is dressing related. And we basically came up with this design. So this is going to be a dual color design here. You're going to have the gray, you're going to have the ultra blue on the other side, which is awesome. And what we've done is we wrap this in our Butterstoff suede. So the Butterstoff suede is going to create a nice, tight, glove-like fit when you're going to slide your hand in there for application of sealants, waxes, coatings, and things like that. This does not have the barrier in it, right? So people will ask, does it have the coating saver in it? This does not have the coating saver technology, mainly for the fact that the price point is fantastic, and for people that do want to have a little bit more uh, dressing absorb into the actual sponge itself, this is gonna kinda help with that, keeping that sponge moist, and also making the application easier. So, this right here is going to come in a 10-pack. Yes, a 10-pack for a, what I would consider to be kind of like an unbeatable price. Uh, it, it's actually pretty insane how affordable this whole setup is. And so um, head to the ragcompany.com. If you haven't checked these out, check them out, especially if you're placing an order during the sale because uh, these are gonna be something that everybody needs kind of in their cabinet in one way or another, whether it is for a wax, whether it is for a dressing, uh, or whether it is for maybe something just as simple as like a tire shine, right? It's a nice applicator, but it's something that you could still use with even some dirty jobs. And so uh, for me, all of the prototypes I have, I was using with Koch Chemi PSS and Koch Chemi Top Star. And I loved every bit of the application with those. So um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, um, next up here, speaking of the nose soaps, we have the new Ultra No Soak applicators. So these are going to be specific for, well, I can't say specific for ceramic coatings, but they're gonna be ideal for ceramic coatings. So this is going to have uh, the, uh, the, the barrier in it. This is going to have the barrier that, um, we've kind of talked about this before, we have basically licensed that technology through auto fiber. People think that we are just massive competitors and we hate each other, that's not true. We actually collaborate with each other on certain things and this is one of those things that we collabed on. So uh, we have Ian's coating barrier technology here inside the Ultra No Soaks to prevent your ceramic coatings from soaking into the sponge itself. And so we've made these dual colored here to make it easy to identify each side. Uh, and if you've installed coatings before, 
you know that actually having a dual colored sponge applicator uh, is a lot nicer uh, than you realize, especially when you forget which side you put which on and maybe you're doing multiple layers of a coating uh, like CSL or XOV5 or whatever it may be. So um, these are new, three by five. These are gonna come in a six pack here, 70-30 blend and um, ready to rock and roll for pretty much any coating. You can wash them before use or use them straight out of the packaging. Uh, we've been using straight out of the packaging. We've had no linting issues as these are a pearl weave. And so uh, anyways, I think that these are awesome. Ultra no soaks here. Uh, round uh, detailing applicators. I keep wanting to say round wax app just because I said it for so many years. Next up, we're ripping, we're ragging, we're bagging, we're tagging. What else? I don't know what else rhymes with that, but here we go. The rip and rag microfiber towels. So these are in stock currently. I don't know how long they're gonna be in stock for. I don't wanna promise something unrealistic, but I will say that these have been flying off the freaking shelves. Dane, can you attest to that? I can attest. You can attest. Jamie, are you excited for yes. the rip and rag? I am excited for the old rip and rag. They you look are like a excited. good quality towel coming out of it, a box. You can't beat it, that. It is. So this is going to be a 70-30 blend, right? I, I've, I've kind of done this spiel a few times now, but 70-30 yep. blend here on the rip and rag. This is going to be the most premium blend of microfiber that you're going to get in a tearaway microfiber towel. It's going to come in this awesome brand box. It's going to look great on a shelf. It's going to look great on an elf. It's going to look great on whatever the heck you want to put it. It's going to look amazing. And so these right here are a 12 by 12 in size. Some people have asked, they say, okay, so you've created a 12 by 12, 70, 30 blend towel. What do you do after you rip them? What do you do after you rag them? What do you do after you bag them, right? It's pretty, it's pretty simple. This is a microfiber towel. You simply tear it away, use it, abuse it, reuse it, wash it, however you want to use it, right? Some people want to wash them, some people want to use them until there's nothing left and then throw them away and that's okay too. But for the people that do wash and want to reuse them, you have this really cool box here, right? After you have, you basically completed your roll, your 80 count roll, right? Maybe you're bagging them separately. That's when you can simply close the box back up like this and then take your towel and then put them back in the box. And then now you have yourself a tissue box full of 80 <laughs> towels. It's an amazing system. It really is. It just, I think some people, they go, well, what happens after I, I rip them all? I, well, buy more or just simply <laughs> wash them and keep using them. It, it's pretty simple. So anyways, the Rip and Rag microfiber towels here, 80 count box. We're also going to have a 30 count box. Um, this is just really, really cool. It's going to be an awesome gift for people um, who are working in the garage often, who are maybe doing detailing, light cleaning. Uh, I'm going to get a box for my mom, technically, because she loves TRC microfiber, but she doesn't really know what to do when I hand her like a 20 by 40 yep. Dry Me a River. She goes, what do I what do I do with this towel? This is too much towel. And I say, well, just, you know, just use part of the towel. And she doesn't get that. This, I can say, hey, this is microfiber towels on a roll. Use them as needed, and she's going to lose it. So, uh, I, she's, she, yeah, she's going to absolutely love it. Jamie, would you agree? Oh, I absolutely agree. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. You know, you give someone an Eagle Edgeless, and then, you know, they take it to the floor or, you know, clean the refrigerator with it or something. You're like, that's not what that's for. No. Perfect <laughs> gift for someone who wants to be introduced to the world of premium microfiber. Well, there's the other side of things too, right? So we're like, I've given people bags of Eagle Edgeless before, right? Or I've given them a gauntlet or I've given them a, an ultra mm -hmm. premium microfiber towel and they go, oh, wow. Well, I'll save this for uh, a special occasion. And I go, don't do that, right? I, can't, I hand them something like, yeah, I hand them something like this right here. And they go, yep. well, I, this is a really nice towel. I don't really want to use this on anything, so maybe I'll just, I'll just save it. And then they'll never use it. It'll, years will pass. That's and I'll true. say, did you use that eagle? And they go, oh, no, I just haven't had a chance because it's such a nice towel. And I go, well, it's not getting any younger, right? But if I hand them this... And I say, hey, this box costs 30 bucks. They're going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to rip and rag all day long. And so uh, anyways, a, a pretty cool new thing here from us here at TRC. Now, uh, next product highlight here, because I don't want to bore you guys to death uh, after sales pitch, after sales pitch. So 
We have some new products from Detail Factory. These launched here within the last month, and I want to just take a minute to highlight them. We have the Fenderwell brush. This thing right here serves as multiple purposes. Serves as a Fenderwell brush, also serves as a weapon. You get yourself in a dark alleyway, right? You run into somebody that maybe is disgruntled or maybe having a bad day, and, and you're not really sure what to do, right? You don't want to actually hurt them necessarily, but you definitely want them to back off. You're going to grab this thing, and you're just going to kind of shake it at them. You're going to say, hey, back off, man. Do you know what this thing is? They're going to say, is that a detail factory fender wheel brush? I don't, want, I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that. So It's the mag light of brushes. <laughs> this, this is, man. I would hate to yep. get hit in the face with this. This would suck. Um, Gladiators but, uh, went into the arena with those things. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, so it's crazy. This is, I, 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 I have to double check the price, but I want to say this is around $20 at the rag company. Um, a lot of people forget about fender well brushes. A lot of people will reuse other brushes for fender well purposes. And fender wells get pretty grimy. They can be full of mud, they can be full of sand, rocks, and all of that. And if you don't want to cross contaminate your brushes and you want to have something specific, this is a fantastic tool. Jamie, you have one, right? Oh, yeah. Got okay. me a fender well brush. At uh, literally, uh, it's been one of the most impressive brushes I've gotten in a long time. It's a very, very nice fender wheel brush. Impressive and impressively priced, too. That's the other yep. big, big takeaway here. And so, um, rubberized grip going down the entire length of the brush here. Uh, you're going to have the Detail Factory branding, which is always awesome here. Uh, but yeah, it's going to wrap around all the way to the very end, basically protecting your paintwork in case you do go up and nick anything on your fender. So, um, it's stiff, but it's not too stiff. Uh, so, it's going to be mm -hmm. able to agitate things and still have a little bit of flex to it. Next up here, we have the new Detail Factory Wheel Face Brush. So this is going to be new as of literally, I want to say about three weeks ago. And I'm going to come in two different colors. We're going to have gray, we're going to have red. Now, the Wheel Face Brush, this is something that they've never done before, um, but something that I think they're, they're doing the right thing. Wheel Face Brushes, in general, are hard to create because typically, if your bristles are too stiff, then you're going to induce damage. If they're too soft, then they're not going to actually clean anything, right? Um, so what I like about this particular brush is that this is going to have that kind of that perfect medium grain of, sti of stiffness here that's going to be able to agitate things like Brake Buster, agitate things like Magic Wheel Cleaner, and really provide a nice deep clean. And so um, again, another really nice tool. I like the way it feels in the hand, and it's going to cover a lot of surface area. Next up here, we have the Ultra, I guess the XL tire brush. So Detail Factory tire brush has been out for a little while now, but people were often using the smaller tire brush on something like off-road tires. With the off-road tires, that's a lot of brushing to do on something that you can cover a little bit faster with a larger face brush. And so this is going to be the XL version here. It's going to have that same bristle stiffness that you're going to find on the smaller brush, um, but it's going to have that nice ergonomic feel to it. And again, if you have bigger tires, this is going to be a go-to. Uh, Jamie, you have a nice. Telluride, right? That has not, not massive tires, but something that might be benefit from a size of brush this big. Yeah, for sure. I didn't even know that one was a thing, so I'm pretty pumped up to hear uh, there's a bigger version of the Are you, are you getting brush. excited over there? I think I'm I getting saw pretty excited. I think <laughs> I saw a bead of sweat drip down your forehead, and you're getting, getting a little hot and heavy about this XL yeah, tire so. brush. I am because uh, I've actually been using the fender wheel brush. You know, a bigger tire comes in. I'll just grab the fender wheel brush and use it for the tire brush. But yeah, I love the smaller version. So I'm pretty excited about this uh, new version. Now, this is this is going to be a fantastic seller and something that I think most people are going to want in their arsenal. Um, I run those uh, skinny rubber band tires on most of my vehicles, so I mm. will like the smaller size. Uh, but on something like my, uh, you know, <laughs> 2001 Dodge Ram with a 5.2318 Magnum, rocking those KO2s. You know, I, I might That's need something. Tires on it. I might need something like this, right? So, uh, yeah. here we go. Last but not least, here we have the interior scrub brush from Detail Factory. So, this is going to be kind of their latest addition to their interior line. They had come out with their pet hair removal tools about four or five months ago, which have been fantastic. Uh, but this right here is going to be ideal for interior scrubbing. You can use it on plastic surfaces. It's safe on leather, safe on vinyl, um, but it's something that you can still use on light upholstery. So uh, we actually tested it on different Alcantara surfaces. We also used it on different micro suedes. And this is 
nice because it's not so stiff to where I feel like I'm going to induce pilling or damage, uh, but it's not so soft that it's not feeling like I'm just just pushing things around. Like it's actually feeling like it's agitating well. So um, they kind of killed it there on the stiffness of this brush. It just, with Detail Factory stuff, you have to remember, right? Things start kind of looking, you know, the same here a little bit, right? There's a theme, obviously. So what we recommend doing is probably buying and alternating colors or trying to uh, color code your setup what works best for you. So whether it's going maybe all red brushes for interior, all red brushes for exterior, all gray, you know, vice versa. Try to mix it up a little bit or just go with whatever the heck your theme is or maybe even label them so you don't forget. Great. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drop these brushes over here to Sid and Josh. And I think we have one more thing I need to cover, but I'll probably go and grab that and bring it to you. Do you, have you seen these? I, yes, I've seen You, ha you have one. seen these? Okay. I've seen this one. Okay. And then, yeah, Nick wanted me to hand those to you. I'm not really for sure what reason why. Well, because we're, we're going to wash the tires. Oh, I thought, I thought you were going to take the, them to the paint. Are you sure? <laughs> no, it's doing I, I thought you were. I thought. I thought. I thought you were just wanting yeah, to give. I thought. I thought you were wanting to give Dane's ultimate a little script. Oh my God, this thing's slick. Right. We did the wash. Clay it can seal. only be improved. Did you do the wash clay seal? Yeah. I went inside to answer an email. Yeah. No, you should have heard it. It was like. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Let me grab one more quick thing. Hold on. But I'll be right back. One sec. Okay. All right. So should we try these out? Yeah. Let's go. So right. let's go we're gonna rinse this wash. Right. We don't know what's gonna happen. These wheels are pretty dirty. So we are going to uh, try to rinseless wash these wheels. Yep. So should we use the big one or <coughs> little? Yeah. Yeah, we'll use Let's the use the big one. Real yeah. quick, can I can I do one more product oh, yeah. plug here? Sure. I gotta you know I gotta I gotta put some food on the table for Christmas. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right, let's do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> Guys, I am on a weird one today, right? But I think it's because I'm feeling so good and I love live videos. I think they're just a ton of fun. So last but not least, here we have the TR1. 360. So um, this also came out here within the last month here at TRC. Technically, it was actually around Black Friday, um, but this is going to have the 360 degree weighted pickup tube. So this is going to allow you to turn this thing upside down and really go to town. So this is a huge improvement for people, whether you're in the tint industry, whether you're in the PPF industry, or whether you're in detailing. This is something where people, you're going to want to spray sideways. Myself personally, I've gotten a little frustrated when I am detailing wheels, tires, fender wells, anything like that. In my original TR1s, I'll go to have a little bit of an angle with just a little bit of product left and nothing's coming out. Josh, would you agree? It can happen. It can happen, <laughs> right? It can be fixed by keeping the reservoirs filled, but you know, sometimes you know, you're, you're, in start, a rush. you're in a rush. And I go, dang it, dude, this is frustrating. This is something I'll never have to deal with when switching to the TR1 360. And so 360 degree spray, that spray is gonna go all the way down to the very base here. It's gonna be very flexible. Um, and again, this is still, still gonna be suitable for most detailing chemicals. Um, everything from your slightly lower acidic products to your slightly higher alkaline products, it's still gonna be 100% safe. And this is going to have the comfort grip already installed from the factory, uh, making it probably one of the best detailing sprayers to date. So that's it, that's all I wanna do. All right. Awesome. All right, so what are you guys doing next? So we are going to spray the fender wells and the wheels with our absolute free spray. Yep. And then we're gonna use our brushes and see if we can get these wheels clean. Yep. Ooh, I like the laser beam stream we're using oh, yeah. here. We got some Just in case anyone wondered how much pressure is <laughs> like a in marksman. Here. <laughs> I like it. You know, it can happen. That's impressive. All right, so I am going to actually take our wash media out of this bucket here. And just lay this on the ground so that we can get our brushes wet. So probably, let's see, we probably don't need the interior brush, right? No, I think we'll leave that one aside. All right, so, and also, this is a sedan, so I'm not sure that, we'll try the fender well brush, but I'm not sure it's gonna fit in there. because Might be kind of tight, yeah. Yeah, so I'll do the wheels and you do okay. the tires. Does that sound good? I have not used, I've only used the fender wheel brush. So this is the first time I get to use the wheel face brush. It'll be a good test though, because these are diamond cut style wheels. So you kind of mm -hmm. get a couple different finishes to look at. Yeah. So this is a good kind of like test here, right? Because if you have, you know, it's icy outside, you can't use water, you don't have access to a pressure washer, you live in an apartment building, you know, there could be all sorts of reasons why you might need to wash your wheels rinseless, right? 
And so while it's not, you know, we would never say this is ideal and you'd want to do this every single time you wash your wheels, in a pinch, you can totally do this. Um, so I think this is really cool, you know, to, to get most of the grime off your wheels and not have it baking in, there's nothing wrong with doing this. You know, you're probably not going to get like a very perfect clean, but this is a really good option if you are working outside, if you're mobile, or like I said, if you're a DIY and you're doing it, you know, at your home or you live in an apartment, this is a really nice, you know, you can use what's left in your bucket to wash the wheels rinseless. So I think this is really cool. So we will get these clean and then we'll give them another rinse, I think, with the, yeah. with the sprayer. That'll be good. <clears throat> and this does look like it's taking off quite a bit of this gunk off these wheels. You know what would be awesome is if we had crystal wash. <laughs> <laughs> and if you pre-sprayed the wheels with the crystal wash and then washed them with the Absolute, I think you'd be golden. This is a really nice brush. I like it. I like it. You got any more questions for us, Dane? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Let me go ahead and pull some up here. I just wanted to wait for a little break in the action before you guys are ready. But if you're good, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, digging the see. brush action. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody was kind of doing <laughs> the brushes there. <laughs> I was into it. it. Brushes? <laughs> Joshua Deal here asking a follow-up question. When using a pump sprayer, I run out. Do I fill again with the same bucket? Would it fill up with dirt also? Or it wouldn't because the rinseless just pulls all the dirt to the bottom. I would not fill it up in the bucket. I would not okay. do that. Um, mainly because you are going to get, then you're going to chance getting like, dirt stuck up in the tubes and all of that. I wouldn't do that. So if you did have yeah. to refill it, I would just fill it up with water add a little bit of absolute and you're going to be good. Um, you water, know, one barely. thing that I think yeah, sometimes water, we get, apparently. yeah, target water. Um, <laughs> I think sometimes <laughs> we get really hyper fixated on dilutions and it's really not, it's mm -hmm. like not that big of a deal. Obviously when we're doing, you know, in a bucket, you want it to be pretty close on. If you're using it as a clay lube, you want the dilution to be pretty close on. But when you're using it in sprayers like this as a pre-spray or, you know, a, a post spray like this, it doesn't have to be that scientific. So if you do have to mix it up in your IK sprayer, just, you know, that's like 32 ounces, just put, you know, a half a half a cap or something in it. So, cause at that point we're really just using it to rinse and it doesn't have to be that specific. So, sure. you know, don't get too worried about that. It does not have to be, you know, scientifically measured out. So now I think, what do we just grab our drying? T oh no, we have something better than our drying towels. Yeah, so I was going to say, what would you normally <laughs> use in this situation to get those tires and wheels dry? Um, well, at home, I would normally use like a blower, but, um, you know, I think we could obviously use towels, but that makes them dirty. Yes. Right? So this is a perfect entry for the ribbon rags, ribbon right? Rag. Hey. I love these. Yeah, because then we know that we can get that leftover brake dust on them. It may ruin the towel. It may, you know, make, make them black and it doesn't matter, right? Absolutely. So super cool. So we are going to use the ribbon rags to get these nice and dry. And again, at this point, you could spray bead maker on if you wanted. You could spray defender mm -hmm. on as a drying aid. Um, it really, these Maybe actually dry up quite makers. nice. We really don't even have to. Yeah, I was going to um, say you this could is use a clean maker, whatever you'd like. So since we're talking about the ripping rags, um, I, because we were talking about giving them to moms, right? And I'm a mom, so I can weigh in on this. Um, I am loving these for my kitchen. So I use, I leave a, ra a roll in my kitchen and, you know, I used to like have, you know, rags and whatnot. I would actually bring in old ones from my shop that I wasn't using anymore. And I would use them one time in my kitchen, you know, for a couple days, wiping the counters and whatnot. Um, and then I would just throw them away. And so these are great because now I have a roll next to my paper towel roll. And so now we just have fresh, nice, clean, you know, rags to clean the kitchen counters with all the time. And then as soon as it's like nasty, gnarly, and you would throw it in the washing machine, now I can just throw them away. And I love that. So I love that I have just a nice roll of rags. It looks nice next to the paper towels. If I am washing my hands and I need, you know, something to dry my hands on or, you know, whatever, if I'm cleaning the stainless steel. Um, so I, as a mom, am enjoying them in my kitchen quite a bit. So I'm excited about them for that purpose too. But these did a great job on, on wiping up these wheels. And we didn't try the uh, fender wheels. Maybe we'll do that on the other side. Yeah. But... I mean, how great is that? Like, that's a perfectly acceptable clean wheel 
in a pinch, right? And I don't feel bad about getting that towel dirty. Right, yeah, because look, <laughs> it's all nasty dirty and we don't have to feel bad about just throwing it away at this point. So, awesome. That was great. Oh, that awesome. does look nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Josh's question, since he, he kind of asked a two-parter, but the second part was just saying the reason he <coughs> was asking that was because he has an idea to do a sort of drive-through rinseless wash, mm -hmm. like in parking lots or something. Yeah. And what was the first part of his question? Was that if he ran out of the rinseless? So basically, yeah, he was okay. wondering where, so where back best to, the to when using it, it, just to make sure he wasn't reintroducing contaminants. Yeah, so if you felt like you were going to go through that much in one sitting, you know, you could fill up a couple five-gallon buckets and yep. have them sitting off to the mm -hmm. side ahead of time that is not your wash bucket. You know, so easily you could have a nice warm bucket. You, you know, you're wanting to use a Yeti, right? Because that's what's going to keep it warm. <laughs> um, so you could have a bucket sitting off to the side that is prepared with absolute ready to go and then you have five gallons but then in your wash bucket have a separate wash bucket for the actual wash but then you have a nice clean bucket full of absolute that you can use for whatever so that's what i would do yep a designated refill bucket yeah is the answer for sure yep. with warm water Who likes preferably <laughs> no one likes cold water <laughs> All right. So Thank you. All right, back there. Too? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm being moved. My mic is hot, but I'm walking over to a new uh -oh. location. <laughs> hot mic. Hot mic. Dane on the move. Dane's on the move. Dane's on the move. This is their fun idea of making me move between two rooms today. <laughs> I like it. On the all right. Side here. Yeah, these brushes are cool. I really like that new uh, wheel face brush. Yeah, I've been super impressed with the Detail Factory brushes. Yeah. Even that interior one has got a really, <clears throat> really good, a good job scrubbing the carpets. And I love the tire brush. I'm excited about this bigger tire brush because, you know, especially here in Idaho, I, the regular one will work on tires like this, but those big trucks, you need the mm -hmm. heavy duty. Heavy duty. All right, Josh, this time I'm going to try the tires. Okay. You can try out that I'll do the face brush. Face oh, brush. yeah, nice. And now i got to order all these brushes before I go. Very cool. So while you I'm guys are doing that, I did have brush, Dominic I don't here. Know that it's going to actually fit in here. Yeah, it's not, it's not really meant for sedans. It's Dominic got. Yeah. Dominic wanted that to know, can you foam the wheels with a separate sprayer and time. rinse with the rinseless wash? <clears throat> I would say yes. Yep. No harm, no harm doing that. All right, next Should up, we this okay. Question? Can I foam wheels with, oh, lost it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he was just asking <laughs> if you can foam wheels and rinse them off. Yes. Yes, you can. Just then order we've the XL got. Tire brush and ripping rags. Awesome. A lot of now, I'm going to have to give me one of these XL brushes before they sell out. I didn't know they were a thing. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no, people are going through them pretty quick. Uh, we got Anna here saying that she really appreciates that there are two Colors of those brushes, red for exterior and gray for interior. That is a good idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. That is a good idea. I and then followed up and also so everybody saying, knows, red is a TRC exclusive. Oh, cool. That is ah. a good point. Good yes. to know. What's Mostly excited <laughs> what about the 360 sprayers. <laughs> Where I just splashed on the side of the car. The bead maker already at work. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. If somebody wants to get a shot of that. Let's yeah. see how it works. Just to prove it? Yeah. Nice. Very cool. All right, let's grab some more ripping rags. So fun. Did we talk about how these come in two different sizes? Yeah, I think the eighty been, box and the uh, thirty count. On that. Yeah, good. There we go. I'll just dry up my mess there. Yeah, these are great for drying towels, or I mean drying wheels. Alright, so then I've got a question here from Craig Wondering. Is that the only difference? Is there a way to put a long wand on the PBF one? So I think it's kind of mid-conversation here. They were talking about probably the 12 plus versus the tint and PPF sprayer. Mm -hmm. And just kind of a comparison between the two. Yeah, Anthony, I feel like you are up to the test. So why don't you tackle this one? So the PPF sprayer, right, is going to have the coiled hose, which is awesome. I love the coiled hose, but you're going to have the shorty, stubby wand. I do think 
technically you could attach, because it should be the, roughly the same fitting, you can attach the long wand onto the coiled hose, you could attach the shorter handle onto the non-coiled hose, and you could probably swap them. The, the trick here is that you would essentially need to have the PPF version and the Multi-Pro 12 version just to make the swap, or if there is a way that you maybe possibly order uh, that separate piece separately from, from IK. Uh, that's the only way I know you could probably get away with doing that, uh, because I love the coiled, wa the, whole, the, sorry, the coiled hose on the PPF sprayer, uh, but I like the length of the Multi-Pro 12 wand. So that's kind of the big difference there. Nope. So, uh, Dane, what other questions do we have? Because I'm, I'm looking to answer a couple good ones. I, I, I kind of right. missed this. And, we, you know, and really quick, also, <laughs> I miss Levi Gates. Master of Shine, detailer of Shout over the master of shine. 27 years, Boise resident of over 900, right? How is that even possible? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Sydney's, Sydney's just behind me, shaking her head. Um, he is right now in the uh, the wonderful world of Disneyland, and he is out there having the time of his life. And so uh, he doesn't take a lot of vacations. So this is one of those where <laughs> good one. Sid. I did the Mickey ears. Oh, 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 I didn't know you were doing the Mickey ears on me. So uh, shout out to uh, shout out to Levi Gates, I and I hope that I hope that he's having a fun time with his family. Uh, he is missed here on these uh, Q&As. So uh, next question here from Josh. We have, I saw your live uh, at SEMA, the IK Pro sprayer with the compressor attached. Is it possibly that a rinseless, is that possibility rinseless wash solution? Uh, when is it available? Yeah, you can actually attach the E compressor to the Multi-Pro 12. 100%. Yep. Uh, you can buy the e, you can buy the compressor separately here at the radcompany.com. Absolutely. And just simply attach it. That's that's the reason why it was made. I mean, so um, yeah, the, the yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So round applicators. Yeah. Sydney. So I'm going to use these Kay. to because um, we were able to dry our ta our tires right with the ribbon rag. So now we can put dynamic on. Okay. With our round applicators. Do we have dynamic? We do. We do. Okay, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't pull you. that earlier. So, uh, <laughs> okay, Gabe did. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm going to try this out on the. On I want the you to try it out. But here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> these come in at an affordable price point, mm -hmm. right? There's there's a ten pack of these, mm -hmm. right? I don't know about you, but as in my garage, I can get away with. I, I stretch a tire applicator. Yeah. Pretty, mm -hmm. pretty far sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. So something like this is something that you can. Yeah. If your tires are relatively maintained mm -hmm. and you're just going to set that aside for tire dressings, right. you could use it over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah, I actually feel like they work a little bit better when they are what I call seasoned. No, they, right. they do. Totally. Well seasoned. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. just, totally. like, just like a seasoned brush, right? Yep. All right, so I am just going to give this a healthy level of dynamic. And we all know dynamic's one of my favorite tire dressings. Dane, did you curb these Mainly wheels? Because you can get it. I was about to ask They're that. literally <laughs> exactly <laughs> as I got one them. Of my favorite. Or are you answering a different question? <laughs> no, Dane curbed the wheels on this thing. I think. Oh, did no, he? No, he didn't. He didn't. My I'm going to in and out. I'm oh just catching gosh. stray today. Really I'm ready to just go it. over and <laughs> suplex a guy. All right. No, Dane. Dane has never curbed a wheel. Well, that's not true either. Not. <laughs> Dane did go to the in and out in Meridian, Idaho. Oh, that might be a good story. <laughs> Dane, Dane, D so really quick for people that are maybe just out of the loop here. Yeah. Living in Idaho, we've never had an In-N-Out burger. Thank goodness. Right? And, well, hey, well, Sydney, hold on. <laughs> we've never had an In-N-Out burger for, it's been ever, right? And we just had one open just two days ago. And none other than our very own Dane Hennon was one of the first to taste that good good on the first night, the grand opening. Dane. How long? How long I'm did you wait? How, how long did you wait for? Three and a half hours. Oh my God. Three and standing. Half hours. That wasn't the drive-through line. The drive-through line was about eight. But but you had a good time though, right? Everybody in the line was fun. Everybody was having a good time. It was like a party. People had boomboxes out there. They were all just vibing. Yeah. They did. He sent video updates every thirty minutes to our group chat at work. <laughs> and honestly. I was invested. I, I was very, I was very curious. So three and a half hours. Are you going to wait three and a half hours? Today? No, I won't wait fifteen minutes for <laughs> whatever they are in that outburger. Dean, do you do like animal style or? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, no. The thing for me was I will never do this again. I did it for the novelty because yeah. how often can you say you went to the first one in your state? 
I mean, that was kind of a fun little I'm thing. I'm looking just for, for some once. really fast interaction here, right? Did you guys see <laughs> yeah, I marked myself safe. Did you make where you marked yourself? I want I everybody, right? Safe, right? There's out of five guys, Waterburger, <clears throat> not good. Mm -hmm. In and out, terrible. And what's another one? White Castle, Jamie. We're just creating a place. fight in the comments here. This is not good. I just tried Shake Shack when I was lost in the Denver airport overnight. Okay, Shake so, Shack. Uh, Shake Shack. You didn't okay. miss it, but Shake Shack was delicious. Yeah. Give us, your, give, give us, your, give us your votes down in the comments. Five what's, guys. what's your favorite burger place? Go. Five guys. <laughs> what is happening? I don't like All Five right. Guys. The gate, they have fake Cajun fries. Oh, oh! Well, I've never had the Cajun fries at Five Guys. <laughs> fake, fake Cajun yeah. fries. And, and Jamie would they know. Man. Jamie would know. He knows what real Cajun yep, food tastes like. So, Josh, talk about the application here. How's it All feeling? Right, so it, it's really good, and I was just going to show people that this is actually reversible. So you might think because it's got that finger pocket, it's only got one side to use. Mm, but that's oh, not actually nice. true. Because oh, cool. you can actually okay. just flip it inside out. Oh, nice. Yep. Look, Josh, cool. with the tips. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 100 percent. So you're actually getting more Very bang cool. for your buck here yeah. in this 10 pack of detailing apps. Yeah. I like it. I like it. The other thing I like, I noticed, is that <clears throat> that little ridge there goes right, you know, in that. What do you? Call yeah, that? You, you can tuck that slate, which that? is really nice. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really nice. Cool. All right, yeah, so really cool. um, I, I am getting we'll the uh, the call here. We're getting the to, call. We're getting the call to meet here in the front of this Ultima, where typically I wouldn't want to stand in front of an Ultima <laughs> in, in most in most situations, right? Especially if there's a driver in it. But <laughs> you know, we'll make an exception here. So. <laughs> um, Q and A, really quick, Dane. Let's knock out a few more questions here before we end today's video. All right. So we got Kimberly asking, does the e-compressor come with straps? Yes. Yep. Okay. Then we've got. Ooh, this feels like something I shouldn't be posting, but maybe it'll be there. When you releasing that new brush, something or other, or something or oh, I don't oh, know. Oh yeah. Heard something. TBD. TBD. Okay. All right. And then people were looking for the XL brush. They're having trouble finding it on the site, but I think they did end up finding it. It looked like it was paired with the other brush. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. So uh, Anna here with a question. Can we do cuffless mitts? Not mints, but mitts. Cuffless mitts. Oh, I love it's, mitts. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> possible. Cuffless what, mitts. What, uh, what mitt would you prefer? You could Let's just use a that. wash pad. That's a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah. Then. Let's see here, going down the line, I'm going back, here we go, that's Shad, we all know and love Shad, here he's popping in saying hey SBG, yo. do you ever use Epic Waterless Wash as prep for Absolute for Actually, really dirty every areas? single time, so um, I, that this time. I, 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 sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I do, um, I either use Crystal Wash or if I'm not needing to use Crystal Wash, then I use Epic, and so I think that, you know, obviously Absolute and the IK sprayers is great if you're using an IK sprayer. But for me, since I have Epic and I am, you know, a previous lover of Epic before Absolute existed. And so I like to use Epic as my pre-spray. So if I'm doing like my own car and I don't need to use Crystal Wash or whatnot, or, you know, all summer I'm not using Crystal Wash, um, I pre-spray the entire car with Epic. Yep. The reason I like that is because it's a highly um, concentrated waterless wash, right? So it is gonna do a really powerful job of encapsulating the dirt and pulling it away from the surface. Um, the other reason I like Epic is because it's consistency. It's very thick. And so I feel like it hangs on the surface longer yep. than pre-spray with Absolute. Yep. So um, it's probably you know a cost difference, but I actually use Epic over Absolute for my pre-spray all the time. Yeah. Mm okay. Yeah. Then I but got some Alex. Like use the IK sprayers, and I just. Did you run Epic in an IK sprayer? You probably could use it in a in a multi, right? I mean, I've never oh, tried that, that, but absolutely. I, yeah. You'd, have, you'd be buying gallons. I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so it is. You, you, it you, is you, a difference, right? You'd be using quite a bit, which right. yeah. cost-wise, it wouldn't make well, sense. Well, well, I don't know because I had a five-gallon, and it's probably taken me a year and a half to go through five gallons of Epic. And but I mean, you're using a trigger sprayer, though. Yeah. Not like a multi. So that's what no, I was saying. Like a multi sprayer, you'd be blowing yeah, through it. Maybe. Testing. I can try it out and tell you. <laughs> Test it. Let's let's know. Know. Yeah. Um, but I do. I do. <clears throat> yes, I prefer. Epic. Alex is asking. Absolute leaves surfaces very slick and glossy. Are the ingredients in absolute chemically bonding with the substrate it's applied to, or just resting on the surface uh, once wiped and dried? They're just resting on the surface. They don't. They're not bonding in any way. Yeah. All and the right. Next time you wash it, it's washed off and has more <laughs> new <laughs> absolute. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, Jamie and Sydney, I just took the sprayer off my uh, clean maker that arrived today mm -hmm. to take a whiff. Uh, what is the scent again between the two ingre ingredients? It smells a bit like the Tony Mazelle cocktail. <laughs> it could very well be a Mazelle cocktail yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what did we what yeah, did we call that, Jamie? Watermelon with mango hint at the watermelon end. Mango, you know, the yeah. watermelon of the dream maker really takes over the bead maker mango, but uh, you yeah. get a whiff of it, you know, in there as well. Mm -hmm. Nice fine mist. Yeah. The spritzer, right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Watermelon mango yes. spritzer. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. There we go. And then Craig asking, what do you prefer for brake buster using it out of the bottle or putting it in a foamer? If so, what dilution for each? Man, I am too lazy to use the IK sprayer, so I use it in a spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but um, run it straight in a 32 straight. ounce, 10 to 1 in IK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Hans, Dane, what is this question here? I don't uh, even I know. I get it. Did, <laughs> Sydney, did you make your bead maker <laughs> head stop stripper yet? Stripper. Um, yes. I, d I did find one on the market that will strip the bead maker out of my hair. Is it because it just nice. miss, it miss it lands? Yeah, because it it's in my shop all the time and then it yeah. lands on my hair and you guys don't have this problem so it lands on my hair and then makes my hair like coated in bead maker and my nails get coated in bead maker too and so then when i go to get my hair colored she has to strip my hair what? to make the color stick did she try using rags to riches <laughs> no i've not tried that i should try that that's actually might be a good idea this was a handy one in reference to the earlier question ec had Zelda about Zelda. shelf life love that profile photo it's so I great do. I love it. Uh, Tony says, I have absolutely my training center from the original batch, and it still works every month. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And to be All fair, right. Tony does one wash a month. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> so that's why, that's why he So I had a lot of opportunity to sit. Yeah, that's why he still has the original. <laughs> Eric Beasley says, uh, here says, what's y'all's method on cleaning pads while polishing? I was wanting to get an LC4000, but the TRC is out of stock. I know, we're trying to get more in. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to polish our wife's Suburban without uh, having to buy a case of pads. Um, I, I do use a pad washer. I'm, pad washer's I'm, great. I use a pad washer. Uh, but I've, I've also cleaned many pads simply in a sink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used before the pad washer sprout, I used to clean them in a sink. I personally wash mine in the washing machine, but I know that's not possible. In this scenario, you need to clean them on the fly. So I think the pad washer is great, um, but there's nothing wrong with, um, I have done this and I think it works great, is I have a spray bottle mm. of rags to riches, right? So it's about one to two ounces mixed in a spray bottle of water. And as soon as it comes off the machine, I will spray it. And then, so you, I'll if you have a couple, second. like, hopefully you have like two or three pads of the same color. So I, I spray it, every, no matter what I'm going to do with it, the pad gets sprayed as soon as it comes off the machine. And that starts to break down the compounds and allows them to not dry within the pad. And so if you spray them, set them aside, and then go to a sink and just wash them out with your hands, that rags to riches right there yep. is going to help that process. And you, you can just wash them in the um, sink and you know wring them out and you should be fine I would when I would do that I used to take two towels and like sandwich yeah. them between to get some of the water out but honestly I mean I did that for years before there was pad washers yeah, so I just, yeah. you know if you're just doing it for yourself and you're at home and you don't need to buy a bunch of pads you're gonna be fine doing that for sure essentially I mean a pad washer is I mean well they're, they're nice well though. it's an on-the-fly yeah. cleaning solution right you're still getting that pad wet and you're still spinning it out so yeah to Sydney's point you could follow that method right Damp it, get it, or, uh, mm -hmm. get it, get a towel. Make sure you get some of that mm -hmm. moisture out of there. Yeah. Throw that pad back on the machine. Go into an empty yeah. bucket, dunk it down mm -hmm. in there. Crank that thing on to yeah. speed setting five or six. Let it spin dry, mm -hmm. and you're back to polishing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For sure. And then here we go. Uh, Aaron says, "Hey, TRC crew, what's the cutoff to ensure my order comes in before the 25th? Happy holidays." That's a great question. Aaron <laughs> depends on where you're located yeah. and yeah. the shipping speed you select. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, well, that's a pretty, pretty blanket coverage, but I mean, I think, right? True? Yeah, it I don't, I don't gives agree. estimates though, right? I mean, yep. it has estimates on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then detailing five, 2006, could you use a dry roll to drive a vehicle using rinseless wash panel uh, at a time? Could you, could could you use, use dry roll? I would think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. And then we have uh, Joshua says, <coughs> e, IK eFoam Pro 12 uh, is for foam use only. Do we need to buy another nozzle that doesn't spray foam to do rinseless? So yes, the Foam Pro 12 is going to spray foam only. So essentially you need to buy the Multi Pro 12 and you need to buy the eFoam compressor to create the IK e Multi Pro 12, essentially. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then... And back, what 
<laughs> uh, let's see. Well, let's see if I can see if I can see if I can throw you a, a comment or two, Jamie. Um, any yeah. chance TRC would stock spare hoses and wands for the IK sprayers? I really need a longer hose on my Foam Pro 12 due to the undercarriage of vehicles. So there's something going to be in the works here soon with getting some ex possible accessories here from IK onboarded on TRC. Whether or not that that comes in the form of longer hose, I do not know. Um, I don't know as far as whether or not that's even an option at this point. But uh, let's see what else we got. And then uh, here we go. Jamie, what do you recommend pre-treating a dirty car with when using a rinseless wash method in direct sunlight? Hmm, that's a good question. Direct sunlight, so I'm assuming you're outside, So, but we're going rinseless, so is there a pressure washer? There's no pressure washer. I've been using Mudbuster as a pre-rinse. If you got a pressure washer, if you don't have a pressure washer, you know, uh, that epic... Uh, Wireless wash has been a pretty good combo with Absolute. I think Epic would be a very safe mm -hmm. choice because that does have enough, uh, actually has a, quite a few different mm -hmm. cleaners in there and things like that and, um, and friction modifiers that would actually prevent probably spotting in general. So, yeah. More so than an there ADC. You. More sure. so, yeah. 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 Uh, can you please ex ex can you please expound mm -hmm. more why it's not good to shake absolute? Mm -hmm. Jamie, do you remember what I taught you during arts and crafts last year? Do you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah. So uh, absolute is a little <clears throat> chunky like a monkey. You know, it has those polymers in it, and they're a little, you know, they get a little happy when you give them a good well, shake. They start mm -hmm. encapsulating themselves, kind of. Mm -hmm. yep. So you give it a little rock. They like it a little better. Makes the mixture work a little better. Yeah, yeah. So it is, you know, like we said, when Absolute came out, it's a very unique set of polymers. They don't exist in any other products on the market. And so they are a little bit different. So if you shake them and they kind of almost go into like a fight or flight mode, right? So mm -hmm. they kind of like attach to each other and they hold on to each other, right? Because they are scared for their life at that point. And so you have to just rock them. And it's amazing how it's like two rocks mm -hmm. and they just, it, then it goes into like perfectly pourable mode. So, that is, that yeah. was very so it was funny during the testing, um, and you may remember this, when mm. we would be like, you know, we'd put it in the bucket and we'd try to shake it, you know? And I remember one time Rennie took like one of those concrete stirrers to it. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. not good. You know, and so it does, it makes them clump together because they're trying to protect themselves. And so um, it's just, you know, whatever that motion is. And so... Motion of the ocean, man. Yeah. The yep. motion, a, a, yep. look at the absolute, yep. right? It's, it's the ocean in the background. Yep. The motion yep. of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, literally. So yeah, so it likes to be stirred, not shaken. <clears throat> okay, and we have Franco that says, I've got a gallon of undress coming too. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a straight or do I need to be diluted? Always straight, never diluted. Okay. Yep. All right, and then I got Anna here. And difference between dynamic dressing and dressed tire shine? Good question. Mm, Good question. Big difference. Jamie, you know the answer to this one? Uh, dynamic is your more traditional water base, you know, silicone type dressing, and dressed is like a polymer type of yeah. dressing. So it's mm -hmm. like body shop safe kind of deal. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 Yeah, so it's more polymer based. It's just, it's a totally different technology. Um, and so good to note here, since we talked about undressed two seconds ago, is if you're switching between tire dressings, you need to use undressed, mm -hmm. no matter what. So if you're wanting to go to dressed and you've been using dynamic, you absolutely have to do undressed, get all of the silicones off of there because it won't adhere to the tire properly. So you kind of have to choose for the cars what you're using, a silicone-based tire dressing or a dressed. Um, dressed is an yeah. awesome choice, but it's like once you make that move to it, you kind of have to stick to it. You can't go back and forth. So like for me in my shop, I have cars that are on dressed and what happens is if they've come in and they've either just brand, bought brand new tires or um, you know, if it was a brand new car, like I have it marked. And so mm -hmm. if I started using dressed, that's what I keep using. And if I switch to dynamic, then I keep using dynamic. So I just kind of decide, but I do like, I like dressed a lot, but you definitely have to strip really well when switching the types mm -hmm. of dressing. Uh, and then the Josh says, is going to be more concentrated yeah. and dressed yeah. is ready to go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Josh says, Wolfpack versus Eagle Edgeless, which one is better for rinseless wash? Honestly, uh, both, or, or Edgeless yeah. Creature, sorry. Um, both are awesome for that. Uh, the Wolfpack is going to be a little bit more spongy. It's going to be have a little bit more, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to hold on to more liquid in general. Mm -hmm. um, but the Creature would technically have more bite due to the shorter pile uh, design of a of the Terry Weave. And so Wolfpack, softer, wouldn't maybe, wouldn't argue safer, but softer, more plush, more absorbent, more spongy. 
Uh, the Creature would be also soft, also hold on to quite a bit of liquid, but be able to have a little bit more scrubbing power. Mm -hmm. This one's for Jamie. Ah, is Clean Maker yeah. good to use as a drying agent? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's mostly bead maker, 10 to 1 bead maker, you know, 10 bead maker, 1 dream maker. So we all know bead maker has been a great drying aid for many, many years. So Clean Maker should be, uh, you know, a well, good drying aid. I don't like that, but I'm sure plenty of you will use it like that. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for our question segment here. I want to give a huge shout out to Sydney for joining us for yeah, today's Q&A special. And of course, Josh Brodel for joining along as well. We had a lot of fun doing this. Jamie, the cleaner, the one, the only, uh, yeah, you know, it. The, the clean, the cl Mr. Clean Maker over there uh, behind the desk. Uh, coming to us from uh, Louisiana, the Deep South, which has mm -hmm. been awesome. And so I'm going to pass this over to Mr. Dane Hennon, who is going to finish off a uh, last bit of sale notes as well as wrap up this Q&A. Absolutely. So, of course, I've got the table in front of me, which we pointed out at the beginning of the program. But here to show you again, I have the towels laid out in front of me that are specials on sale. 30% off right now at theragcompany.com. You can go check it out doesn't last for too long, this sale. It's a better than coal sale. And that brings me to my next point, which is coal cash. Yes, everybody who places an order will get one of these handy dandy little cards inside of their order. And uh, what does it say? Well, it says $25 off your next purchase of $100 or more. And of course, there is an expiration date on this. So you'll want to make sure you use it between December 26th and the 31st. So that's a pretty tight window, but 25 bucks off. Hard to argue with that. And uh, it's just a simple code right there on the card, so you'll be able to use that after placing your order uh, right now, and you'll be able to get one of these in it. So, handy little reminder. Then, of course, in addition to, obviously, 30% off the items you see in front of me, there's also the sticker. Now, the sticker is special. It's a little family truckster, a little throwback there, but uh, it's a fun one. I really like it. It's got some sparkle to it. It's definitely got the glitter going on. It's very festive. So if you've got something that you throw stickers on and you want something very seasonal, this is the one to get. So if you place an order, obviously, for the sale stuff going on right now at theragcompany.com, you get one of these stickers, but I'll do you one better. If you like the sticker, but you decided I want more stickers, we're actually offering a special little mystery pack where you pay, you get this sticker, and you get two bonus stickers, mystery stickers. It could be anything from the stickers you've seen us offer before. So, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities. It could be anything from Halloween to Memorial Day to Fourth of July to, I mean, it could be really anything. Maybe an old Christmas one, who knows? But we have a lot of very cool stickers to choose from, except you won't be able to choose them because it's a mystery, right? That's part of the fun. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Everything in front of me, as you've seen, between the Cyclomit, the Eagle Edgeless, the Gauntlet, the Everests, the Premium Window Towel, the Dry Me River, and the Twistress are all on sale right now, 30% off, specials on all those. And once again, you get the coal cash when you do that inside of your order. So. Look forward to that, and that's really it. So apart from that, all the sales stuff going on, I wanna take a moment just to remind you, there is a thing that we do every year, and now we've kind of started doing it at the beginning of the year, which means it's actually coming up pretty soon here. That is TRCMA, or as we like to call it, TRCMA. It's pretty fun. It's basically a cool show where we actually bring in our friends from around the industry to come right here to the studio and, you know, they tell us what's new. They tell us what's cool. They do demonstrations. We all get together and, well, just have a good time. But we live stream it to our audience. Everybody gets a chance to check it out as it's happening. And, uh, yeah, I really want to invite you to come check it out. If you weren't familiar with it, it's definitely worth your time. And if you miss it, the beauty of doing the live streams, uh, well, you can always come back and watch them later. And, of course, once every show is finished, we actually bookmark it so you can see who did what when. So you won't miss out on the action even if you're not there right when it's live. But I do recommend being live because if you can, you can actually ask questions to all these folks from around the industry that we invite to be part of our show. And in addition to that, I will also say 
The show extends beyond just the companies that you know that we carry, that we love, all that. We actually bring in some, uh, some new blood, some different folks from around the industry who we just think are really cool. We like the products they sell, we like the people involved, and we bring them on too. So, you never know who might show up at TRSEMA, and I just want to extend a warm welcome to you if you want to check that out. Now, of course, you're probably asking right now, well, when does that happen? I'll tell you. It's the beginning of April. We'll have the dates locked down for everybody, not too far from now, but for now, just know it's the beginning of April. It's that first week, and uh, I want you to come and check it out. So really, that's about it. This has been a great show. I hope you guys have enjoyed the little live stream we did here. And if you couldn't tell, it was a bit of a, a dry run, a little practice leading up to TRSEMA. So if you enjoyed this, we'll obviously just keep doing this and building on it, but you'll see all kinds of companies involved. So I want you to be here. I want you in the comments. I want you hitting that like button. I want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it when we actually go live for TRSEMA. But we'll make sure we give you a heads up. It's just, you know, the least you can do is hit that button and make sure you remind yourself. Uh, and that's really it. So from all of us here at The Rag Company, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And we'll catch up with you over on The Rag Company Podcast next week on The Rag Company Podcast YouTube channel. So make sure you check that out too. Anyway, you guys have a fine evening and uh, we'll see you. Bye.